Hello and welcome to EGX Digital 2020. Uh, my name is Matt Morley. Um, this is going to be a series of chats and an exploration into the importance of esports in education. Esports, if you're watching this, you probably already know what that means, um, whether that be from a casual perspective of playing against whether that be friends or, or people you don't even know or playing with friends uh, to you doing it competitively uh, whether as a solo player or doing it with uh, your team. Esports as an industry is absolutely huge and booming and growing exponentially um, as time goes on. Um, obviously the, the money involved with it is phenomenal whether that be through sponsorship or prize money, three million dollars being given out for winners of, of Fortnite World Cups um, and obviously that's internationally but it applies to the UK as well. But only last year we had someone come second place and, and become a millionaire um, because of how well he and his teammate did in Fortnite. It's not necessarily the, the ob most obvious or easiest industry to get into and as such people don't necessarily always know where to go or what's involved. Esports is phenomenal. It's so much more than just the gaming. You've got all of the events, you've got the team management, you've got sponsorship, you've got the marketing. And, but where can you go to find out about that? Uh, fortunately, it's something that is now being recognized in an educational stance and an educational setup. And there are uh, qualifications that you can do at college and at university that will help you and aid you with getting into to that and as well as developing many other skills as well so this is going to be like i say a series of chats with uh, some of my colleagues um, and people from outside organizations that are here to help kind of give guidance and give information about the benefits that esports brings to to education enjoy so uh, I'm joined by James Fraser Murison. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, and tell me a little bit about yourself, James. So, as I say, my name is James. I'm the director of learning here at Queen Mary's College, and I have helped put together the first ever esports BTEC uh, in conjunction with the British Esports Association. And hopefully, there's been a nice opportunity to kind of share Queen Mary's journey uh, from start to where we are now. So, what inspired you to, to start that journey? Well, to be, to be honest, obviously, you and I spend a lot of time in classroom with students, um, and we've watched student trends over the last couple of months and years, kind of move to just watching, I don't know, various music videos and what have you on YouTube, to as and when they can, sneakily going onto to YouTube now or Twitch to watch sort of gamers game. Um, we all know as well that um, gaming is a, is a very popular area amongst um, all teenagers um, and people younger and older than that as well. Um, so by having a, an initial chat with some of my classes, we, we kind of formed an initial discussion as to whether Q, uh, QMC would be interested in running an esports enrichment. Um, we did that. We went down to the University of Chichester to um, see how they were doing it because they were a university uh, along with the um, University of uh, Staffordshire who were um, running an esports degree. So we spoke to them about advice and, and sort of the practical element about it. Uh, and then we ran, as I say, uh, an eSports enrichment from last September now. And it proved to be far and above and beyond the most popular enrichment that we do here at college to the point we had 55 students sign up. Yeah. So instantly we realized we were heading in the right direction. Um, and that uh, brought us a little bit of traction from um, uh, the British eSports Association. Um, and also Pearson, who are the BTEC providers, about uh, whether I'd be interested uh, in maybe helping form the first ever esports BTEC. So, like you say, you kind of it stemmed from you observing students, um, like watching kind of obviously online gaming. Hmm. Um, beyond sort of introducing it to, to to perhaps appeal to and appease the students and, and be sort of like an area they're interested in. Why do you think it's important to kind of start merging esports and education together? I think where possible, if you're if you've got the option to merge something that's contemporary and interesting, and obviously with an educational element to it, 
I think all educational providers should be aiming to do that yep. anyway. Uh, on top of that, um, particularly in light of, of the current pandemic, obviously, there's been an exponential growth of e-sporters. I think the industry is getting close to, if not even beyond this now, 1.2 billion. So again, within an educational perspective, this is something that people need to be aware of. Um, and we're obviously very keen here at QMC to prepare students for um, opportunities and jobs that maybe don't even exist now, but will do in a few years time. Um, and also prepare them to be sort of digital proof for, again, a few years time from now. And I think the um, eSports BTEC encourages some of the finer elements and the better elements, if you will, from business, sport, media, and obviously, you know, eSports in itself, which is rather niche, we know that, um, to be able to put together this qualification that, as I say, is truly unique, never done before, but will give students an opportunity to get into the eSports industry, whether that's within their degree or straight into the business side of things. That is a truly fascinating and, and really contemporary and exciting time for them as well. So that's the purpose. Obviously, this is looking at esports as an industry. So what sort of areas, why, what, what will the students come away with? Um, well, I think what's really, really ingenious about this qualification, the, the British Esports Association and, as I say, Pearson, got together with, with one or two other teachers and, and people within the esports industry where we spoke to students and we spoke to other people who were running similar courses and similar units as I say in business or media to put together this contemporary subject. Okay. And the idea is we are preparing them to go into an esports industry or business or media as examples and we are preparing them to not game but prepare them to be aware of their own branding putting on and staging their own um, esports events if they so wish, um, mental and physical well-being now which is a huge thing anyway obviously but something that we we've got to put on uh, within the course itself so we can fight the stigma of it just being about students gaming in the dark. Yeah. It's important that we cover as I say screen time and posture and, and, and dealing with the physical and the mental well-being as I say within that that sphere. You look at um, units to do with the introduction of it as well and how they can get noticed in a, a very popular and increasingly so um, arena in industry on top of that. So we cover an awful lot of the business fundamentals. Yes there will be elements within the course where they will be gaming, yeah we understand that, of course there are. There's film studies, there are things where you watch films and the sport isn't just playing sport but actually the thing that really makes the qualification stand out is the underpinning industry and the theory underneath that. And we know that, that there will be people who will raise eyebrows over this course. Of course they will, as they do with various other subjects um, pretty much since time began. But what I think we managed to put together and we will be able to demonstrate is that what we are preparing students for is for a wider world out there that they're probably more aware of than arguably parents or, or other people of that, of that ilk. But because they don't know or they're not aware of it doesn't mean we shouldn't be raising the awareness of it. Obviously, esports as a title sounds quite niche. Hmm. I think, and like you say, um, there is a stigma around it. There is the idea to people that perhaps don't think of the the, the industry as a, as a broader topic that it is just going to be sort of all about learning how to play a video game and then for you know, sort of five hours, fifteen hours a week, go home, continue playing games, <laughs> and sitting in the dark. Um, and obviously, I think it's fantastic that. It looks at not only how they can improve and sort of work within the industry beyond the gaming spectrum, mm -hmm. um, but like you say, it also sort of looks at helping kind of the, the mental and the physical health of, of the students. Um, can you give me a little bit more information about that? How, yeah. how are we sort of looking to implement that? Um, there's an awful lot of science out there and, and studies that have revealed that, that within the eSport fraternity and industry and those that game, um, there's obvious uh, increase of communication and team building skills, uh, logical kind of thinking and problem solving on top of that, um, and actually a community that comes from that, which those possibly who don't know an awful lot about it or finding out about it might think it's ironic that you're plugged into a machine and you're improving your communication skills. But if you think about what's, what's involved in that, actually you're multitasking and you're, you've got various kind of dialogue taking place with various people up and down the country or globally 
to kind of reach your common goal. And so in that respect, that's where obviously the sports bit it comes from. Um, there's quite a huge tie in these days with STEM subjects as well, because of, again, the, the, the process and the logistics that come with that. And I think as the months and the years tick by with this, you're going to see an increase with that as well. Qualification itself is, is sort of UCAS ready and has been recognised in the latest government report for digital and culture, so they're aware, well aware of it as well. And, and at the moment within this country, um, esports is, is kind of keeping the UK kind of floating at this precise moment, along with the traditional media and film uh, disciplines. The gaming community, as, a, as I say, in the UK is, is huge and is proving to be incredibly popular with great dividends about the financial um, implications of, as I say, keeping the businesses and industries going, which is why it's important to recognise these things. Esports isn't going to go away anytime soon. No. And to be able to kind of ride that wave within education, I think, is a really important thing to do. And it, it's, it's come at a really vital time, I think, as well. How do you see that developing? How do you see that growing? And how is it helping the economy as such? What sort of job roles are the students likely to be able to approach? Um, we're very fortunate here at at Queen Mary's College that this is this has taken a lot of months in the making to kind of get us this far um, but in doing so we managed to secure some really good partnerships and sponsorships with um, HyperX, uh, Belong Arenas, uh, a company called Seed Learning um, and HP uh, as examples and the fact that all of those people are on board that shows as I say that we're heading in the right direction. In terms of what we're preparing students for um, there's new job titles and roles with things like shoutcasting, and for those who don't know what that is, that is in essence sort of presenting and, and commentating on gameplay. And that is a huge uh, industry, and, and the very best people who do that have got followers in the millions and are in huge demand because it's a skill and a talent that they have. But on top of that, you've got the usual sort of video editing and social profiling and those that want to sort of do stage management and planning events and um, being able to run your own business on top of that. And uh, what I have to say to parents as well is that if you look at the BTEC specification for esports, sometimes it's easier to get your head around almost replacing the word esports entirely and putting the word business there instead. Okay. And then all of a sudden it, things will sort of be a little bit clearer for you in terms of Again, how you go about planning and creating and COVID's going to change a lot of things as, as we well know and, and moving to a more secure digital arena on top of that is asking more of these students to come to the fore who have got these skills and, and need to know the sort of underpinning, underpinning knowledge and theory behind that to make a career of it if they so wish. If they don't, that's fine, they've still got the opportunity to go into a more traditional business role or media role or what have you, and that's absolutely fine. And, and a lot of those things are linked as well. And the majority of our students, both here and, and up and down the country, will go into those more traditional roles for now. And it's just great that the, this subject will give them the kind of a bigger skill set and portfolio for them to, to go on and do those things if they wish. Yeah, I think it's, it's a sort of perhaps a good, almost reversal of the, Obviously, the people that work in the esports industry now are going to have come from probably traditional jobs, traditional sort of education and qualifications, and they've applied that into an esports aspect. Mm. Whereas we're taking the sort of the esports industry, and and from that showing and developing the skills that they can use in that esports industry, yeah. but elsewhere as well. Hundred percent, you're dealing with. 80-90% transferable skills. We, don't, we're not, we are not saying that if you do this eSports qualification with us, you can only do an eSports job. That's absolutely not what we're saying. What we're saying is that we've, we've upskilled you and sort of hopefully digital proofed you to a certain degree to go and look more in detail on this brand new sort of industry or industry that we're becoming more aware of with each passing week, if you want. You certainly don't have to. Um, but I think what we are legitimately doing, is, as I've said before, is we are preparing them now for a for a brand new world with jobs that may, know, may not even exist now further down the line. And I think regardless of, of what your role is within education, that has to be a part of it, as I say. And I, and I think that's what we're doing. And I think that, that will prove to be 
uh, a very popular decision, as I say, hopefully in a few weeks and a few months' time. Hopefully, indeed. Yeah, that's it. So, um, again, looping back to something you mentioned earlier, you mentioned that the, the qualification was, was UCAS ready. Yep. Obviously, there's a chance that people that are watching this don't necessarily know quite what that means or what sure. benefit that brings. Can, can you go into a little bit more detail about that? Yeah, so those um, students who are interested in uh, going to university, yep. um, then you have to effectively hit a certain amount of what's called UCAS points and tariffs. Um, and so what the, the BTEC uh, in eSports has done and secured very quickly was to make sure that this BTEC is in line with all the other vocational subjects and A-levels. So if you're doing a single BTEC, it'll be the equivalent of one A-level. If you're doing, say, the full qualification, the ex uh, extended diploma, that will be the equivalent of three A-levels. And the points that you would get traditionally are the same points. So it's recognised within university and in, um, employers and apprenticeships and what have you. Um, and of course, it wouldn't have been done a year ago because we didn't have that recognition. We were building this subject. So again, as I say, the fact that the fact that it's recognised at university, the fact that there's degrees out there, the fact that, as I say, the government is pushing this heavily mm. shows that we are in in the right place to be pushing this. We're heading in the right direction. Um, and it's important that we got the right support in place on top of that as well. And it, it will be laughed at, I understand that, by certain people, but it's probably the people in the nicest possible way who haven't done their own research on it yet or, or will dismiss it outright. And I think once they, they kind of look at it clearly, that they'll, they'll see that there's, there's a lot of weight behind this. What difficulties have you found in, in sort of <laughs> bringing this to fruition? <laughs> what hurdles have you had to sort of hop over? What walls have sort of just been plopped in your way? I think I'm, I'm very fortunate that um, the principal here at QMC has effectively greenlit this, green this from day one. Um, and I think that's because she's very savvy and understands that you know, what really helped was, was um, the gentleman Wolfies who won the Fortnite tournament a year or so ago because that made the BBC News headlines and mm. whatever. Um, as I say, our principal and various other kind of CMT members know that this is a thing and it's growing because as I say it's getting more national and global recognition. Um, and once it was um, having input from Pearson, then obviously why wouldn't you take more notice of it? We've had six, seven months of 50, 60 students trial it, inverted commas, with the enrichment. So again, that, that's kind of added to it. The biggest hurdle at the moment, I would say, and not at all unsurprisingly, is parents. Mm -hmm. Because as someone who, who sort of stopped teaching English to teach media a long time ago, I spent a lot of my time at parents even going, this is why media is important, this is why film's important. And obviously now I'm spending a little bit more time going, this is why esports is important. And I think it's once you have those sensible conversations, then I think you can logically see where the, where the potential is for this uh, further down the line. Equally, I understand that parents don't always have the time to look at these things and they are worried that their son or daughter spends 10 hours at home doing it and they're going to come to college and spend another 5 hours, 10 hours, 15 hours a week gaming. And obviously, it's our job to dispel that. As I say, fortunate to have some really good sponsors and partners on board but it's very difficult to get any type of money anywhere within education. Um, and we're fortunate to have wonderful sort of PCs um, set up and good to go from, from HP. And, and therefore it's making sure you've got the right infrastructures on, on board so you can kind of deliver what, what you promise. So you need those exciting conversations with the head of IT. Um, thankfully, he was on board as well. Uh, which always helps. So I think it's keeping the dialogue open and the communication open with both parents and, and the powers that be. And uh, we launched this course at the start of this year and I did an online seminar for parents and, and what have you. Um, I think we had 40, 45 people, sort of potential parents and, and students turn up to watch that. So again, it was sort of allaying fears and, and reassuring them. And it's not everyone's cup of tea, but neither's English literature or physics or uh, French. And if that's not that's not your thing, you don't have to do it. That's very true. <laughs> so you mentioned obviously the the ability to, that you've worked, been able to work with local companies. Mm -hmm. How has that benefited the, the course qualification? How will that benefit the students going forward? So again, having kind of various industry members on board already is because they've seen the importance so they want to offer um, really unique 
bespoke work experience opportunities. So naturally, they want to take our very best students because they might end up working for those companies in two years' time. So why wouldn't you want to be a part of this? And again, businesses involved are savvy enough to see the the profit margins of anything involving esports as well. So they, they can do that with the college they can trust with us, with the students that they'll help mentor and what have you, then for them it's a no-brainer. We're really lucky as well that we've put together um, a scholarship program for uh, non-male and BAME students to encourage them as well to kind of get a part of this, this esports industry because we're aware that, again, from people looking inside, it's a predominantly male industry or could be seen as a predominantly male qualification. And we want to dispel that. We want to encourage anyone and everyone to get involved within this, this industry. And having the backing of Belong and HP and whatever, you, that's only going to help us. And it's only going to kind of grow the interest and the passion from people who aren't aware of it, but again, can see its importance. Yeah. So, you know, I make no bones about the fact we want to be the leading provider of esports in the South. And I think we're set up to do that. And I think we haven't got we haven't got a local estate agents and we haven't got a, a local kebab shop behind us. We've got Belong, we've got HP, we've got some serious heavy hitters and that's because they can see the importance of it. People can go and work in graphic design and promotion and social media expertise with an eSports qualification. It doesn't mean you just game, it's far, far from that at all. This just kind of helps push that along if they so wish. So, as I say, I think we've got some, some really good um, kind of uh, opportunities coming our way within education. I think we've got the right people involved and I think this will only grow and grow to be both popular and relevant and if that's not the point of education then what is? Very true. I think, I think it's important like I say we just need to make sure we're raising the awareness yeah. to people that perhaps aren't necessarily on board or just aren't aware of the benefits of sort of a course in, in esports and the, and the skills that the students can um, learn. So, uh, James, if people want to get in contact with you, if they want to sort of find out any further information about studying at QMC, about the qualification at hand, yep. where can they go? Who should they see? Um, I think the, if you type in the my ridiculously long surname, James Fraser Murison, uh, you'll find probably various videos now. We'll, uh, we'll bring the, that up on the, the screen. Yeah, it's probably, sort of, yeah, that's probably floating around one. about this area. Um, but um, you can find me on the uh, Queen Mary's College website uh, for various kind of course details. And you can find me on Twitter um, at Fraser Esports for any kind of help or queries that you may have. Awesome. Thank you very much. And that QMC website was qmc.ac.uk. That's the one. There we go. And they'll be happy to, happy to help you out with any uh, questions or queries you may possibly have. I think we've covered everything we need to. I think so. I really enjoyed that. Excellent. It was good. Thank, Thank you very much, much, James. Cheers, Matt. Right. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Uh, hello. Uh, I'm Oscar, and I'm an eSports Partnerships Manager at Belong Gaming Arenas. Uh, it's been great to be down here at Queen Mary's College today um, just to see the setup that they have here. Um, it's great to see that Universities and colleges are now pursuing much more into esports education. Um, when you can have a BTEC degree here, you open up the talent pool of people that the esports industry can choose from. And it's obviously good to see to showcase that there's many pathways to esports and it's not just about playing games every day. And we want to get rid of the stigma around the typical gamer and that there's much more to it than just playing all night. And now to talk about the esports uh, qualification from a slightly different perspective, um, we have Natasha. Hello. Hello, Natasha. Um, thanks for joining me. You're welcome. Here in our esports room. No um, so, tell me a bit about yourself. Um, so I'm Tash. Excellent. Obviously, I teach media. Yeah. Uh, and now I'm going to be embarking upon esports BTEC. Fabulous. From the board. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I've studied media almost the whole of my life. <laughs> I studied at university, did film studies, all of that kind of stuff. Always been quite interested in it. Okay. From both a teacher perspective and a student perspective. Yeah. So what has, what's led you to the esports qualification, to be an esports teacher? Well, first of all, I was actually going to stray away from it. I'm very, I was very sceptical at first okay, about the what? term esports. Can I ask why? Um, just more because 
the term esports was so new, I think the definition of it has was skewed a little bit. So I think when it was kind of presented to me, just by a range of different people in terms of like, you know, the actual what the definition of esports is, it was just, oh, it's just gaming. Okay. And because I've never been, I've never been a gamer, so if I've never done it for hobbies or anything like that, I have gamed, but I've never been a gamer, if yep. that makes sense. I kind of just felt like, oh, a whole kind of like, you know, qualification, a whole course just for that. How, you know, what exactly is it going to entail? And I wasn't really too sure about it. Um, but then, so, you know, when I've learned a little bit more, obviously done a little bit more research, had more conversations, spoken to more organisations, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, you kind of see there's actually a really, it's a really huge industry. Um, and it slots almost right into the middle of a media studies qualification for starters, yeah. which is why it can also have its own kind of course, which is why we do have the own course. Um, and, you know, there's a lot more kind of like, there's a lot more angles to it. There's a lot more perspectives. There's a lot more um, meat, if you like, to just the gaming. Um, One way to describe it. Yeah, if you like. It's, you know, there's a lot more substance to it. Um, and that is the bit that started interesting me. Um, and then also, so, you know, so first of all, there was my scepticism. And then I, you know, wanted to know more. Now that I know more, I'm interested. And then I see there's not a lot of women around. Um, you don't really see a lot of women. You don't really see even a lot of women from the Bain community. Especially, obviously, that's kind of you sort of finiting down, down that kind of exactly. And I obviously tick those two boxes, and it is just like, okay, this maybe is something that we can do. Um, and also, having taught media before, you know, quite a lot of times, you do you are starting to get a lot more females who want to game and they're just not too confident to be involved too much because they feel it's quite male dominated um so it's kind of like you know if i'm interested in doing it and i'm interested in teaching it and i'm interested in kind of being part of it maybe that might encourage a few more you know girls to come on board um to kind of like you know find their place in that industry as well but it's it's ever growing as well this is what i like it's quite um i mean media is is quite ever evolving anyway but this industry in itself seems to be so fast-paced yeah um you know it's it's amazing actually how much you can do within that industry and it doesn't matter your skill set so even if you're not a natural gamer you can still you know progress really well within that industry which is what i quite like so if I look back to kind of something we were saying at the beginning, you obviously you're sceptical, you're not necessarily a gamer yourself. I think that's, that's arguably a, a huge example of, of why I think the qualification is so important mm -hmm. because it's about learning those skills that aren't necessarily gaming. Yeah. Like that's what the, uh, so the enrichment would be for so coming along and, and sort of partaking in the in the team game exactly yeah the unit is all about learning the kind of the media aspects and the business skills mm. and, and and those elements which I, and I think if you can see how that fits into the esports environment without even having to be a gamer mm. I think you can sort of perhaps be almost like a prime voice for sort of making people realise that it isn't just about the, the exactly gaming. exactly I mean because I think um, having spoken to a few girls about it, they have initially it will be like, oh, I don't want to just do gaming. Like I'm not just 100% really just a gamer. You know, I might like the odd game or two or whatever. And then when you kind of explain it to them, they then get a little bit excited because then they start thinking about things like, oh, campaigns. Oh, marketing for gaming. Oh, actually, I'm really good at design, or I'm really good at creating characters or storylines, or you know, I'm really good at um, editing. So they might want to, you know edit you know some type of some some gameplay or, or something like that and then all of a sudden the conversation changes and their their mindset changes um and like you said even though they don't have those kind of like those gaming skills they do have other skills and other interests that will enable them to you know do quite well actually on a course like that yeah no definitely i think that's that's the thing and if you look at the statistics the split between male and female is, is pretty much 50 50 mm. like of people that play games claim to be gamers yeah but if you look at the numbers of people that are kind of front and center it's not reflective of that no. and again like the the numbers between sort of uh white and, and bame 
it's relatively similar, but again, the faces that you see are not. Yes. And I think, and I, I appreciate I'm a, a white male sort of sat here <laughs> talking about it. So I don't know if I'm, hopefully I'm a good voice for, for what I'm trying to say. I think yeah. you need for it to not just be people like me sort of saying it's a good thing and you should be doing it because oh, you want to encourage anyone and everyone. Exactly. Um, but in general, I mean, it would be nice to see as well up and down the country, like who whoever else is running this course and kind of seen, um, you know, are they doing something quite similar? You know, are there people who maybe look like me or who are, you know, whatever, you know, like basically who are also teaching this? Because I think that, is, that part is really, really important, especially in the time that we're in mm-hmm. as well. The world is changing. People are really kind of like... There's, an, there's like, you know, things with, we've got a lot of things with identity and and in this, in the country. And I think it's really good that, you know, there are people out there who are teaching courses like this, who are representative of almost everybody out there who are, are not too sure about their own identity. You know, and you can look and you can say, oh, okay, you know, I'm a mixed race girl and I really like gaming. There's a mixed race teacher there who's doing this. Or do you know what I mean? That kind yeah. of stuff. And I just think it's it's really important, I think, to to kind of push yourself in that type of role. And I'd like to say that I'm one of those people who like to push myself in that role, So, that, which is another reason, obviously, why I'm also wanting to do this course. Because I think you mentioned earlier about raising this type of awareness and I'm all for raising awareness all the time, you know? And the best platform we have is as a teacher. So, yeah, no, you know, use our skills to the full extent, basically. And I think as a teacher, on a subject that allows for interaction kind of worldwide. Mm. Um, and obviously, I think the, the other important thing is, because we've got to be mindful of, of things like bullying online. Right? Yeah. Unfortunately, like that is still a huge issue. Yes. Right? And it's, it's I, I don't know if it's necessarily getting any better, but, and that only comes from typically ignorance um like there's videos of, of girl gamers female gamers getting picked on just because there they're go. girls yeah um and the same and like the uh, the racism that, that sort of shows its face and again like these people might not be conscious about it like on a on a day-to-day basis mm-hmm. but they think they can kind of get into a, a place where they're not going to be identified or they're not gonna if they don't see the, the sort of the, the spectrum of people is, is kind of it being like oh everyone plays games everyone people that whatever your race whatever your gender like it, that shouldn't be something that I use against people that exactly aren't they. yeah and I think even if it's even if we're in a position where we're just changing the sort of opinions of, of people or making or reinforcing the right sort of approach yeah in our in the group of students I think it's really important absolutely. Absolutely, and it makes those students feel so comfortable, yeah, more confident as well. Yeah. And then, obviously, if they are faced with that kind of bullying online, because of that confidence, it allows them to kind of confront it in the way that they need to for themselves, so that it doesn't kind of like you know have a negative impact on themselves as an esporter. Yeah, as well. Yeah. Like we should never be; these things should never be stuff that kind of hamper someone getting a career exactly following um like a passion mm. like we should remove as many of these boxes as possible of rather course. than sort of put them back in um i think i think that might be everything we need to, yeah. to go through anything else you want to bring to the table um no okay. just bring on four guys yeah four guys <laughs> Um, hopefully, hopefully this doesn't now age like milk and all of a sudden, yeah. like three months down the line, no one's playing it anymore, yeah. but I can't see that being the case because it's phenomenal. Right. So Tash, if people want to find out more about you for, as, a, as a teacher, as an, as an esports teacher, media teacher, have you got any sort of social media handles they can find you at, follow you on? I do. Okay. So at the media teacher on Instagram. Perfect. Um, and obviously we'll, you'll be able to follow Tash's adventures as a media teacher and an esports teacher yeah um, should be able to find my twitter handle on that as well cool thank you very much Sasha, and thank you. thank you very much for watching guys um like i say my name is matt morley um you can find my stuff probably here maybe i'll let my technician help sort that out <laughs> um otherwise um we've been here at qmc 
been fantastic having you watching. Um, enjoy the rest of the show.